Hey guys, this is Mike with Playmore Games, and today we're going to take a look at Burning Banners. We're all set up to play Chapter 1 of the Chronicle. So, uh, let's uh, make with the shaky cam here. I'm not exactly uh, Paul Greengrass with the, with the camera here, but it's a big game, um, as you can see. And we'll take a closer look. And all of this stuff here. Uh, but we are all set up to go based off the opening builds. We have our play mats set up. So here we have the resistance factions, Empire, Oathborn, Fjordland, with their blessing decks, their hero decks, and these are their deck of cards. Over here we have the invader factions, the orcs, the army of the night, and the goblins. And now mentally I kind of want to move the goblins next to the orcs, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we have the heroes in play down here. And along the side here for the hero uh, resistance factions. We have our raised markers, our bank, our cup of uh, monsters, our sea monsters. Here we have our spell deck, our treasure deck, our arcane study uh, in season display. So we're all set up according to turn order. So we'll start with the Goblins, Fjordland, Army of the Night, Eastern Empire, Orcs, and then the Oathborn. We've already added our Arcane Study Markers. We've followed the initial setup instructions. The Empire did spend gold to reduce revolts, which it can do per scenario rule. So let's take a look at the opening builds. So we'll look at the Goblins first. The goblins are set up along the north map edge on the Broken Coast map and the Wildlands map. So uh, this is very close to chapter or uh, scenario one, the Jarl's War. So we have some hobgoblins, some goblin warriors, some goblin elites, uh, and basically the plan is to just raid down towards Fjordland. So. We have a settlement here we're going to loot. We're going to try and loot this one. There's one in the in the mountains here. Um, so there's a couple of easy targets. Um, this one's a nice easy target. This one's a nice easy target. And if you look, Fjordland doesn't really start with a lot of sh with a lot of gold. Um, so we really only have two Fjordland units on the board at this point in time. Um, and I put one here, Freeholders, with a hero. And then down here, in Attakirk, we put some Sea Reavers. But there's a lot of undefended territories, and their income is pretty good. So they'll be able to build some units up. It's just a matter of how much can the goblins take over here. So that's all for Fjordland. Uh, down here, on the Imperial Heartland map, we have a ton of Imperials. I put them along the coast. Um, put some garrisons, some cheap uh, Akritoi units. Use them as cheap garrisons. Uh, we get to set up three covens, um, which covens are kind of like special army of the night uh, bonuses. So they can recruit feral armies in places next to covens and when they attack a coven they get a bonus dice. Uh, so we put one here and two on the wildlands map. We got to pick this place as a control marker and I or any one spot and I picked I, I didn't put a ton of thought into it but I picked here because there's a couple of uh, um, interesting places that we can go to. Um, obviously, I put a coven in Muffin Town. Um, <clears throat> so the Empire um, has a very strong economy, um, but it has a lot of ground to, to cover as well. Um, over here, we have a bunch of our dwarves, including minor armies, and along the map edge, just out of sight, 
is our orcs. So you can see orc units, orc units, orc units uh, coming in on the fields of ash map. Over here on the wildlands map we have another pair of covens, we have more dwarf units, and we have more goblins at the top of the map. And in the middle of it all, we have the Spire of the Moon. Resistance, or the only, um, the only city that belongs to an invader faction. So, uh, to win this scenario, right, the first, in each chapter is three turns, so, um, and you can end it after any uh, turn. Uh, so we'll st we're, we're going to do... Uh, three turn. This is kind of a warm up. This is my first time with playing um, more than one faction on a side, so it'll be a little bit of a learning curve there. But after having played a bunch of one on one scenarios, I wanted to jump into the deep end. Uh, so, if the invaders control two resistance cities at the end of any season, they win. If the army of the night collapses, uh, the resistance wins, and uh, if neither of those things happen, the invader wins if it has 20 or more settlements with control markers, at least 7 of which are loyal resistance settlements, otherwise the resistance wins. So we need 2 cities or 20 settlements, which means our orcs and goblins, they're going to have to make moves, okay, they're going to have to make big time moves. Alright, so that's a look at the, the broad scheme of things. Um, I'll just say that, you know, I am a little sorry about the setup, it, you know, it kind of is what it is. Um, when Compass publishes the Vassal module, I'll definitely get a video on Vassal. It'll be a lot easier to follow, I think. But, um, this map is really gorgeous and it doesn't really do the game. Uh, justice, you know, just to play it on Vassal. So I'm happy to be able to have the, the space to do this, even if it's less than optimal. So, all right. Let's move some goblins. I'm not going to do the whole goblin turn, but we're going to just start by moving the ones that you see here. All right. So the goblins have a bunch of cash on hand, but we're not going to spend any of it for right now. Um, so what I'll do is we'll look at the cards that we have here. So this gives our, this is our blessing. It gives our caster stealth in one die roll, uh, one bonus die. So um, we can use that to our advantage uh, to do a stealth, stealth attack. Maybe we can try and um, uh, take a garrison somewhere. Uh, for neutral settlement, maybe. Um, and then we have a bunch of cantrips. Ignore hits. Free strikes. Okay. So that's our hand. Um, Alright. So we're going to take these hobgoblins and go one, two, and we're attacking the settlement here. Now, if you have your terrain effects chart, you can look at hexide terrain. If I attack now, they'll get two defense dice since we're attacking across a river. So it'll be three white dice versus a black and two white dice. So pretty even, or I can move it across to here, and then on the next turn, using ship movement, and then on the next turn, I can attack with one black and two white against one white dice. Um, what the hell? Let's go for it. So first we'll roll the defense dice. And we got one hit. So the goblins will need at least two. 
So start by rolling these. Hey, what do you know? Uh, and the third one doesn't matter. Uh, because um, that's enough to eliminate the garrison. Uh, so we take that spot. We're going to put a control marker down for now. And we're going to loot it, which means we take three coins, since we're the goblins. Orcs also take three. All others take two. So the goblins have a ton of cash that they could spend on stuff. Um, so, since that went so well, what we're going to do is we're going to spend that three that I just showed you. And we're going to buy our siege engine. Okay, and it's going to go one, two. And the siege engine is going to attack the Heimberg. So the Heimberg only has one defense die. Got a one. We only have one black die. This is very risky because this is a fragile unit. Um, so we have one black die. We need at least a five. And uh, we got a two. All right. So this is finished. So I'll just tilt it like that. And we're going to take these goblin warriors. We're going to come down and we're going to try and attack again. And I probably should look at the uh, Fjordland hand because the Fjordland does have a caster down over here. Um, everything it has is out of range. Like it could play heat lightning um, potentially, um, but it's out of range. Alright, so the goblins get two attack dice, they get one hit, so as long as this is not a five or a six, they take the Heinberg, and it's a six. So they're tapped. Um, so we'll come down, we'll go one, two, three, they're tapped. Uh, one, two, three. Um, we can try and see what goes on here. So, we're going to fight the lair. And actually, we'll do that with the goblin elites first. Might as well. So, for the monster, we just draw from the monster cup here. And... If I'm the invaders, I'm hoping for something easy. If I'm the resistance, I'm hoping for something nasty. Okay, that's kind of nasty. Uh, so we got a hill giant who rolls two black dice and two white dice. He's not a caster, so um, the other faction can't do anything. And uh, we'll put this monster under control of Fjordland. So Fjordland player will make decisions for it. So we'll roll for the Goblin Elites first. We didn't get any hits, so this is potentially pretty bad. Yeah. So those goblins are dead. Alright, then we'll take these warriors. Uh, since I already kind of committed to attacking them, we'll just follow through. So the warriors, they get one hit. And then... The hill giant got one hit, and we'll roll two black dice. No. No. Alright, so nothing happens there. We're probably just going to cut our losses. And then we're going to take these units here, and we just slide over just a little bit. And we're going to go one, two, three. And now we're going to attack High Garden. And High Garden is a mountain space, so they get two dice. It's two dice to two dice. So first we'll roll for the goblins. They get one hit. And then the defenders, 
they get no hits. So the goblins loot this one as well. So they'll take three coins. And they'll place a control marker. Now if you're not familiar with the goblins, when the goblins place a unit, um, or when they capture a city, they don't get income the way the other factions do. And during the income phase, they have to pay a coin for each of these. Um, now, if you remember, we need like 20 of these um, to have control markers at the end of the game, or at the end of any season, if we want to win. So, we got to keep our cash on hand. Or take two of the cities. All right. Okay. Um, so that's it for the goblins on this side. So I'll just uh, go ahead and rotate these back. And uh, let's see, we're at about 16 minutes, so um, yeah. All right. I'll keep this video short. Um, now that you saw how the goblins come in, I'm going to do the other goblins. And um, I'll either make a second video uh, later in the turn or something like that. Um, but, you know, if you made it to the end of this video, uh, let me know what you want to see. If you want to see me dragging my camera from place to place while we play the, the whole hold iron thing, let me know. If you prefer like a snapshot or a quick overview or something like this, let me know. So, anyway, this is Burning Banners by Compass Games. Um, and uh, I hope you uh, check it out, give it a chance, uh, it's a great game, a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, my name is Mike and uh, we'll see you in the next video.